Destroy the boo-boo stain off of that subscribe button. So, Jeremy, this weekend, all of Jacksonville went out to the NAWCQ and rally. And what did you do? I won the national championship. Ladies and gentlemen, your North American world champion. We know that you played cash tier, but how was your experience? Oh man, it, it was amazing. Um, you know, I had a lot of fun, had a lot of fun with my friends, all the guys that went, um, all the guys that, you know, messaged me throughout the tournament, Romeo, you know, <laughs> um, just everybody there, man, it was great. I love competition. Um, I didn't think I'd do so well like I did. Um, just to go 17 and one, um, you know, I didn't think I'd be doing that. But, you know, I just want to thank everybody and, um, you know, I'm, I'm truly blessed. You truly put on for Jacksonville. We're going to get into the profile, but before, just wanted to thank you for saving this profile for Jacksonville. You're doing this for your community. Yes, sir. It's an honor and a privilege to be doing this. Let's go ahead and get these shout outs out the way before we get into it. Oh, boy. Well, first, let me shout out my sponsor, uh, Yu-Gi-Oh! Sports Center. Um, great sponsor. Um, shout out the YGO process. Uh, shout out to my mom and dad. Uh, I always thank them, for, uh, thank them for supporting me because I know when I first told them about this, I just got laughed at. So uh, just to, you know, see my mom cry when I told her about it and, uh, you know, just see how far they've all come and, and accepted me, you know, accepting the game and accepting my, you know, dedication to the game. It really meant a lot. Uh, you know, the shout out to everybody in Jacksonville, everybody that's here, Sherrod, Bradley, Ilya, Quindaris, you know, there's so many names. Romeo, Guillermo, Peter, Josh. Well, let me hold the OT Fenrir's. Uh, <laughs> um, man, I just, I love you guys all. Um, and yeah, I just, it, it still feels unreal for me. And, you know, also shout out to um, Zach Stefan and, uh, you know, Jameet. Um, I, I will always remember you guys, just some uh, local Yu-Gi-Oh players that, we, that we've lost in the past. Uh, I'll never forget about them, and I, I'm always praying to them. I know I definitely did it in Top Cut, just praying to them, making sure that they don't, not necessarily that I win, but just give me, let, let me make the best decisions that I can, and just help me through um, you know, the stress and everything that Top Cut involves. So um, I just, I will always think of them, and um, I'm just truly, truly blessed again. Of course, again, here in Jacksonville, we're more than a community, we're a family. And you went out there and put it on for us. So we appreciate you for that. Always. But again, without too much commentary, let's go ahead and get into your profile and see what won this year's Nationals. Okay. All right, so of course I played Cash Tira. Um, so uh, double Unicorn, three Fenrir, three Rise Heart, um, and of course the Scareclaw. I know a lot of people go back and forth with the, you know, double Rise Heart or triple Rise Heart. Um, this deck bricks a lot. And so I just wanted to make sure that I had at least the Osis and Birth uh, would be live as much as possible, and at least with Rice Heart, it helps. It helps with that. Uh, so just just bricking is just the main thing. I always concern myself with that because you know I, <laughs> I have a lot of friends that play the same deck um, at Nats, and they they definitely break. You know <laughs> they you know, they give me my <laughs> I can't even. Oh my God! <laughs> I already know Brian just. <laughs> but yeah, just it, it's mainly because I just didn't want to break and. Um, you know, I, I, it, it, I didn't open up any in multiple, so that was really good. But yeah, that's um, that was the reason behind the, the three rise heart. Um, hand traps, so the only hand traps I played were three ash and three shifter. Um, I did kind of go back and forth with the shifters. I did see some deck profiles that weren't even playing shifter in the main, which made sense. You know, I did play like nine mirrors. Um, you know, I did go nine oh with them, so I didn't draw it that much, but um, I just wanted, I wanted, like, I felt like in a big event, in a big nationals, you would play other stuff besides the mirror. So, Shifter was a good call. It did help me out against, like, two Dragon Link players. Uh, so, yeah, I did, again, these are only hand traps I played. And um, I did not play Imperm, and I'll explain that later. Uh, for the engine, of course, three Birth, three Theosis, Planet, and uh, the Terraforming. Shout out to Tanner for letting me use his, uh, 
uh, what do they call this type of quarter century quarter century uh terraforming um i think i did draw this a lot so uh that was pretty cool but uh yeah shout out to him but yeah this is just a regular um and then three part of prosperity so that's pretty much you know sort of the engineer yeah i, I was looking for them speaking of lances uh three forbidden lance i was looking everywhere for supers but i couldn't find any but um this card is just really good a lot of people against this deck signing like dark rulers book of moons um you know of course imperm anything that hits a rise heart so it's really good sometimes i'll just end with a rise heart and just set this especially against a deck like dragon link or a deck that i know loses to a rise heart um because, <laughs> because it just it pretty much wins the game by itself so um <laughs> i really like that <laughs> um also three dark hole in the main so like I said earlier, I didn't play Imperm. Um, the reason why is because I didn't think it did enough. And a lot of my friends at the Airbnb were telling me like, you know, if you have Imperm, most of the time you're setting it and then you're just gonna get, you know, battle phase even lead or you're gonna get harpies or you're gonna get lightning storm. So even, then, even, if, even if you're going second with Imperm, it doesn't really do that much. Like it doesn't do enough. So the way I play the deck is I try to keep cards in my hand. I try to keep follow up. So even against the mirror, um, it's really good against the mirror because um, even if they tell me to go first, I'll make just a regular board. And most times in the mirror, you don't usually die the first turn because we play card. We all play cards like Prosperity and stuff. So as long as I don't die, having this card in your hand is really good because most of the time they're going to end with like a big material because your board is going to get broken anyway. Regardless of what you do, your board is going to get broken. Having this on a crack back was really good for me. You know, like I said, I went nine and zero against mirrors, so I I am so happy I played this. Um, and a lot of times, even with imperm, even if you draw imperm for turn, you'd have the fill spell up, so now you can't even use it anyway. So drawing this just automatically just clears the board, allows you. And also, people ask me like, why don't I play Regeki instead? Um, because this card outs Ibly, and that's a card that you know really hurts Castira. So I'm really glad I played three Dark Hole. It really helped me out the entire event. So. Yeah, and also gives me your own monsters because you need to clear your board so you can summon Unicorn or Fenrir. So uh, it was just, it, it was amazing. So, Very good. Um, the rest, just three Book of Moon, uh, double talents. Um, I was going to, I was going back and forth kind of with triple talents or, or uh, you know, or, and double Dark Hole. But the way I looked at it was triple tactics. It's just, it's a hard once per turn. Dark Hole isn't. So if I draw Dark Hole in multiples, um, I'd be okay with that. Even if it have a negate because it'll force negate. Drawing double talents isn't always the best. So, and I'm really glad this was perfect. I didn't have any issues with it. So I'm um, definitely glad I played it like that. And just the one big bang. And so something I don't think you get a lot of credit for is how you piloted the deck in game one. You clearly were able to see some of the game twos. Where <laughs> Eradicator did a lot of the work. I did. How is this main deck good going into the mirror match, which I know a lot of people are struggling with? Yeah, like I said, I mean, I think really maining the Dark Holes really helped a lot in the Forbidden Lances. Um, I, I seen, I played, I will say my, my toughest matchup was against Cameron Neal, top 16, because he played the version, the hand trap version, I guess, that got second place at um, Europe. Uh, so it was a little bit tough because, you know, Lances weren't as great as um, against that type of build. But all in all, usually in the mirror, they're playing cards like Book of Moon and, you know, stuff like that, Imperm. And this Lance was just really good against the mirror. Um, and it, it makes it makes you feel a lot more safer. Um, and again, dark hole just answers everything in the mirror, and you don't really you don't really care about much. Uh, so I just think that, I think just the way I play again, keeping cards in my hand, not going, not putting everything on the board. Um, and I think that really helped out for me. Let's get your extra teacher. All right, so extra deck, uh, nothing too crazy, barren. Uh, I don't really go into it that much, but it's good when you open up like double ash. You can just use that with unicorn to go into Baron. Um, the two uh, just fossil cards I play. I didn't even use this one. Uh, this one could be anything else, but this one was really good. I usually this, this is usually the first thing I attach to a rice heart um, after I use prosperity or whatever, just to make sure that if I get like you know dark ruler or something, uh, it'll be engraved. I can use for the you know for the crack back on my turn. Um, Goliath, you need this for Runic. Uh, no, Donner. I didn't really make this as much, but as soon as you take it out, you're going to need it. So I'm glad I played it though. So uh, those are all the pretty much the Rise Heart targets. Uh, three Shangri-La. Uh, 
usually for my turn one combo, I mean my turn one board, I usually just try to end on. Uh, I usually I usually go through both of these. So you know the first rise heart, the first shingle out, and the second the second one that goes into a rise heart. That way it automatically has three materials. Um, this could have been something else, but I wanted to make sure I just had another one just in case. Uh, you don't really go into the last one, but I don't know. I didn't. There's really nothing else I wanted to put in that I would feel safe with. Um, double book of, I mean double uh, you know big eye a lot of people ask me why do I play two I see a lot of different profiles only play one I just think in the mirror when sometimes you do get them grindy mirror matches where you're gonna miss that second big eye uh, I I never thought about only playing one so I'm glad I played two I know other people have their different opinions on it but uh, double big eye is good for me uh, dark arm so uh, this this is a good card. I didn't even know it, that you can use more than two materials, like two more more than two level sevens. I didn't even know that till somebody till a mirror did it on me. So that was pretty cool to know. But yeah, this is a really good card, especially when you're trying to break a board. Uh, double Zeus, of course, standard. Red eyes, flare metal. Um, I mean, to be honest, this could be something else. But this card actually helped me a lot, especially when like there are a lot of times when you wanna when you wanna do a lot of damage and don't play into nib and this and then like just. With three monsters attack and then go into this and it puts your opponent on the clock so i i really like this and of course it's also good for you know eradicator but um I, I think it was a really good card but you definitely don't have to play it but i really liked it that's just a good just a good eradicator target and a good card to use when you're trying to go for game and of course the one rise heart so. and for the side deck for the side deck we got you know three ghost bell just for branded i'm not trying to really <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, really, um, just for Brandon and Labyrinth. Um, just not trying to get Gimmick Puppet. But, yeah, that's pretty much that. Uh, the three draws. Disregard the Miss Rarity. I was looking for Super Draws. But, um, but yeah, Joel, I, I wanted to play this because I was, kind of, I was really afraid of Flunder. This deck really struggles against Flunder. And it's also good against the Runic um, for higher decks. So, I'm really happy I played it. It was really good. It was it's really how I beat the the Manadium, how you say it? Manadium, Manadium deck. Uh, the guy that was like undefeated the first the first day. Um, I played him like this, uh, day two and then this one just really won me the game against him. Uh, so I'm really glad I played that. Uh, for back row hate, I played Panker Tops and three Cosmic. Uh, I noticed a lot of people are still playing like Lightning Storms and Harpies. I'm just so afraid of anti-spell with this deck because I know how powerful that is. And also a lot of people at my locals were also playing Eradicator, so I just wanted something I can chain off of it. <laughs> um, and just not completely get blown out. And Pinker Top, shout out to Brian, because I kinda I pretty much got it from him playing the Pinker Tops. It's another card again that when I know my you know, cash mirror mate or you know any deck that plays Eradicator, just something that that's not a spell that can get rid of something. Um, and it's also a level seven that you can combine with you know with birth and stuff. So I'm um, really glad I played that. And I guess the, the bread and butter that you know got me this national championship uh, was the two D barrier, the uh, two eradicator, and the one trap trick. Um, I really like I really like this. Shout out to Brian and Ilya. We all talked about this, and they really gave me this idea, and I really liked it. Like the moment they said, I loved it. Gives you basically you're playing six cards, but actually only playing five. And just with the one trap trick, you're able to. It just I, I feel like it really worked out um, against the mirror. Even if I like. Cause I don't know if they're gonna tell me to go first or second. Even especially like even in top guy, I didn't know. But I would always put this in going first or second because even if you go second, um, most of the time you're breaking the board regardless with just engine. You know, Castera boards are never safe in the mirror. So if you usually and when you do break the board, you're ending it with dark arm, which is a dark over 2500. So you just dark arm the board, set set eradicator pass. And usually you can win just like that. The burks the burk on the field is dead. All the spells that they're drawn is dead. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm so happy I did that. Again, against every mirror I would put it in. And it, I mean, it worked out in, in top cut. And uh, of course, no D bear again. It was just another card. I was scared of Purely. I did lose to Purely. My only loss, um, the guy that was undefeated, um, day one. Uh, he was a really good player. I didn't see it, but you know, this is, that's mainly what it was for, or maybe Despia, or anything, anything like that, you know, Sprite. I just really like D bear. Uh, so yeah, all in all, I'm very happy about my side deck. It really worked out for me. Again, I'm just I'm just so happy to bring this home for Jacksonville and in front of all my friends and um, you know I, I couldn't ask for anything more. Jeremy, you played this deck phenomenal. For the people at home, would you change anything about your list moving forward? 
uh, I mean, I don't, I don't know what's left now. I mean, I I really love everything about my list. Um, there's really nothing I would change. Maybe maybe some cars in the extra day, like the Fossil, the, the one that pops back, back row. Maybe that could be like an Insist or something or, or a Mecha Phantom Beast. Um, you know, it, other than that, though, I really love my main deck. I love my side deck. I think it just handled everything perfectly. Um, and, you know, I'm just I'm happy it worked out for me. Jeremy, you're going to be going to the World Championship, not only to represent America, but to represent Jackson. Do you have any final remarks? Oh, man. I just, I can't wait to try my best, and hopefully I bring it home for not, not only Jacksonville, but, but, you know, North America. We, not, we haven't won it yet, so um, I'm excited, and I can't wait to go out there and give it my best. Do Appreciate the profile, Jeremy. Congratulations. Thank you.